Hello friends, welcome to SQL Practical Question Series. Here is another interesting question that I have received from one of the subscriber. First let us understand what is the question is about, then let us see how to write a SQL to achieve this question. So here is a table called cars which contains the name of the car, the start year and end year. So in this case, uh, the year may be continuous. For example, it starts at 2007 and ends at 2009. The next row starts at 2009, ends at 2011. That means it is actually continuous. So you can say from 2007 to 2011. Same way it starts at 2011, ends at 2013. That means in this case, it starting from 2007 till 2013, it is a continuous range of years. Same way for, let us see for the next um, name. For Maruti, it starts from 2009 to 2011, whereas the next row is starting from 2013 to 15. So in this case, it is not a continuous year. There is a discontinuity between 2011 and 2013. So the expectation is, if it is continuous, we just need to give the minimum year to the maximum year. That means we just need to aggregate this data into a range of year. So in case of Swift, it starts at 2007 and the ends at 2013. So we need to just print one row saying that starting at 2007 to 2013. In case of Maruti, there are two uh, groups. One is at 2009 to 2011 and there are another range is from 2013 to 2015. Since it is not a continuous, we just need to display as it is. So this is the expectation. Now let me show you how to achieve this uh, functionality. So first let me show you what the logic I am going to follow. Then I will show you how to write the SQL to achieve this logic. Okay. To start with, so here is the input table and here is the expected output table. So what I am going to do here is that I am just going to expand each row so that in each row the each year getting displayed. For example, the first line that is from Swift 2007 to 2009, I am just going to print it like this. Swift 2007, 2008, 2009. Similarly, the next row, I am going to expand it three times because the number of years is starting from 2009 to 2011. Same way, the, this is for actually the second row. Same way, the third row, I am just going to expand it from 2011 to 2013. Same way the fourth row Maruti, we are going to expand from 2009 to 2011. So this is for Maruti. The fifth row, we are just going to expand it from 2013 to 2015. To know how to expand from a range of data into sequential row of data, I have already explained in another video, that is in video number 22, I have already very clearly explained how to convert a range of data into a sequence of data. Exactly the same logic, I'm just going to use it here. So I'm not going to repeat the same logic again here. I would suggest you to watch through the video number 22 to get to know how to convert a range of data into a sequential number of data because exactly the same logic I'm going to follow. Once, print, once a range is converted into, into a sequential row of years, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove the duplicates. For example, in this case, if you see the Swift to 2009, it is like two rows are there. Same way like 2011 is two rows because it would have come from one from each row. So all these duplicate row I'm going to remove. Very simple, we are just going to use a distinct on top of this result set. Okay, so the distinct output, we are just going to get it like this. In this case, if you can see, it is a sorted order of unique years for each model. That's what we are going to say. So from this sorted model, we are just going to print the aggregated value. In fact, this functionality also I have covered in another video that is in video number 23 saying that provided a sequence of data, we just need to convert into an aggregated row of data. Exactly the same logic I am going to follow to achieve the second part of the query. You can think that this video is a practical implementation of the concept whatever we have read in video number 22 and video number 23. 
The reason I have posted video number 22 and 23 is basically to make you understand the practical implementation of combining two different logics to attain one, to attain one simple and a single functionality. Fine. Now let me show you the query by writing the logics of what we learnt in video number 22 and video number 22, 23. See, what I would suggest is you can pause this video at this point of time. You can go through the video number 22 and 23 and then I would suggest you to try this logic by yourself. In case if you are getting struck, then you can just come and continue from this point so that this will give you a very good learning experience. Fine. Fine. Now let me show you how to write the SQL to achieve this functionality. Okay, I'm creating the table. I'm just populating the data, our test data and just I'm committing the records. Fine. Now let me select the information from the cars table. Let me select name, start year, end year. Okay. Now my intention is basically to replicate the rows as per the number of years between each row. For that, I am going to use the lateral join. In fact, this concept is what I have explained very clearly in the video number 22. So I am just quickly writing the query here. Select row name R from dual connect by level less than or equal to end year minus start year. Okay, plus one. Okay, so. Okay, I am putting row name minus one. The re all these things I have explained to you in the video number 22. So I'm just quickly going ahead with this. I'm selecting R. So now if you see here, we actually replicated each row into the number of times the year lies between the start year and end year. So here is our first set. The second set is from 2009 to 2011. Third set is from 2011 to 2013. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use start year plus r so that we will get a sequential range of data if you can see here from 2007 to 2019 i'm just printing in the last column 2007 2008 2009 similarly for second set of data i'm just printing from 2009 till 2011 so this keep goes on for all the records anyway i'm not interested in printing all these uh, columns i'm just removing all these informations now we just got the uh, sequential row of data. Let me just give an alias year. Anyway, I want to remove the duplicate part. So I'm just using the distinct. Okay. So this is what the logic, what we have seen in the video number 22. So let me put order by one comma two. Okay. Now, so this is what we have learned. So this is our first part of output. So from the first part, now we are going to aggregate back to get our actual output so now what i'm going to do i'm just going to use a with class so with r as select name comma year from r so now we have the data now let us proceed with our second part of the output okay now what i'm going to do i'm just going to use row name in fact year minus row name if you see here the intention of year minus row name is basically to group it if you see all these things will fill in one group you can see the value so maruti this is, will fall in another group this will fall in another group in fact this part of the logic is what i have explained in the video number 23 fine now it's very simple i am just going to use minimum of year comma maximum of year as per the group so i'm just saying group by name comma this year minus one now if you see we just grouped it swift the minimum year is 2007 maximum year is 2013 same way for maruti minimum year is 2013 to 2015 the next one is 2009 to 2011 anyway we are not interested in displaying the last column we can remove it from our select statement okay yeah we are done if you want you can put an order by statement to order it properly and this is our uh, expected output so basically this e example we will give you a, a practical implementation of how to use two different concepts what you have read in the earlier one is basically to convert a 
range of data into a sequential row of data. The second part is to convert a sequential row of data into a range of data. Fine. In fact, uh, this query I have posted in the uh, same link where I have posted the earlier two videos. So for video number 22, 23 and 24, you will find the data set of scripts and the query here. So once you have uh, tried by yourself, I would suggest you can copy this query and you can check the result by yourself. And thanks a lot for watching. I hope you would have enjoyed this video. If yes, please like this and subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video, interview question, SQL practical question and concept videos. If you want any questions to be answered, you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail ID. And thanks a lot for watching this video.